Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMDF 30 day ensembles for the UK and for Europe as well for today's first video. Coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have your week 10 day video update, uh, which will go through the GFS, the ECMWF, and all of those things. Got a little bit of news about Article 13 and the hashtag Save Your Internet campaign. That's what we'll uh, talk about in um, today's second video update. But starting us off for this Tuesday is the ECMDF. 30-day look at. So we're going to begin by having a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies for Europe for the week ahead. We can't look at mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar heights with this, unfortunately, but you can get a rough idea, a broad idea of what the pattern is going to be uh, doing to produce these temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So we begin with um, week one. It's week four for 2019, uh, but it's week one for our forecast period, and it's taking us from the 21st through to the 27th of January. And it's a cold scene uh, in the week ahead across many parts of Europe. So look at Scandinavia, for example, coming out much cold average, particularly in northern parts of Scandinavia, where some areas are going down between 6 and 10 degrees below average. And that's up towards the Arctic Circle. So it's a cold time of year anyway. That's going to be brutal cold across uh, northern parts of Scandinavia and going into northern parts of Russia as well. But it's not only there, but it's cold and average. Many parts of Europe have been forecast to be cold and average. So, for example, all of these central areas from France to Belgium, Holland into Germany, uh, all of those areas cold and average by as much as three to six degrees below average in a few places. The UK and Ireland are also forecast to have cold and average temperature anomalies of around one to three degrees below average. So it's not severely cold, but it is certainly colder than average for uh, the UK and for Ireland in the week ahead. Quite a cold scene across much of the Mediterranean uh, as well, so uh, if we go down into the Med, you can see that uh, we've got Spain and Portugal, for example, a little bit cold on average there through the central bowl of the Med. It's a bit cold on average, and over to Italy, uh, a little bit colder than average there also. The milder than average temperature anomalies are forced down into the southeast of Europe. So we have got above average temperature anomalies, but they're in the extreme southeast. So they're from the Black Sea uh, down towards um, Greece, Turkey. Those areas are coming out with above average temperature anomalies, quite substantially so. Three to six degrees above average will be very mild in the far southeast of Europe, but most parts of Europe have got a cold or even a very cold week coming up. Precipitation anomalies in uh, the week ahead, taking us from the 21st to the 27th of January, looking like this. So uh, it's generally quite dry across northern parts of Europe, although we have got variation. So, for example, much of Norway is looking drier than average. So there's bound to be high pressure sitting there close to Scandinavia. Uh, but uh, as we go further towards Sweden, over towards the Baltic Sea, it goes a little bit more unsettled. So slightly above average precipitation there, most of that or all of that will be snow, of course. The central parts of Europe are drier than average. Again, we explain this all the time. If the air is cold, it will tend to hold less moisture than if the air is mild or warm. So uh, it tends to be dry when it's cold, but any precipitation that does fall will tend to fall as snow. And it doesn't take much snow, of course, to start producing uh, disruption. The UK and Ireland generally looking uh, quite dry as well, although it is a little bit more unsettled in the North Sea, but uh, generally it's a dry and average scene in the weekend, much of Ireland and the UK. France average or a bit drier than average. I mean, going down into the Med, it looks quite unsettled. We've got um, we've got uh, northern Spain there around the Bay of Biscay, wetter than average there, although central southern parts of Spain and Portugal uh, drier than average. Into the Med, from the, the central bowl of the Med eastwards, it's generally quite a wet scene, so it looks very wet around Corsica, Sardinia, and Italy, for example. And then even wetter as we go down to the southeast. So, despite the fact that southeastern parts of Europe are um, southeast parts of Europe are quite mild, it's also very wet around Greece, for example. Big, big thunderstorms and heavy showers uh, churning away there. I would have thought in the week ahead. Overall, it looks drier for the north and uh, wetter down in the south of Europe. That takes us through 
to week two is the 28th of January to the 3rd of February. And the broad situation continues, really. So these eastern and southeastern parts of Europe are mild than average. It does look as though the mild and average temperature anomalies are actually expanding and pushing northwards a little bit. So we've got Ukraine, for example, just there. Uh, mild and average and extending into uh, eastern parts of Poland also uh, just here. And then, of course, we've got these mild temperatures around the Balkans, and then they go down in towards Greece, Turkey, around the Black Sea. So it's a mild scene in the southeast of Europe and the east of Europe, and in the north and in the west, it remains cold. If anything, it turns colder, certainly for the UK and Ireland. Um, we find that the temperature normally for us is going down some areas to between three and six degrees below average. So that's very cold uh, for the end of February, uh, end of January and into the opening days of February. Moving northwards into Scandinavia, again, it's quite a cold scene, particularly for Norway and going up into towards the Arctic. Um, Belgium, Holland, uh, Germany. Of course, Denmark comes in with Scandinavia, but Denmark went down into France, Spain, Portugal, all of those areas forecast to have below average temperature anomalies. So the split really is from the north and west to the south and to the southeast, with northern and western parts of the country getting the coldest uh, temperatures. Precipitation anomalies in week two uh, for our forecast period from the 28th of January to the 3rd of February show that, uh, again, same sort of situation we have in week one, really. It's driving average uh, around Norway, generally, so high pressure like to be sitting there and extending over towards Iceland as well and to the north of Scotland. Looks wetter than average in the southwest of Europe, so much of France, Spain, Portugal, above average precipitation there. Of course, as that, uh, as that uh, precipitation engages with the cold air, you would expect to find a lot of it turning to snow. So this could be a very snowy scene, for example, across parts of France, maybe into parts of uh, southern England uh, as well, perhaps. Um, going through the Mediterranean, we find that it's above average with precipitation through the Central Bowl and over into the Mediterranean too. If we cross over the Asiatic into the Balkans, again, it looks pretty wet there with a above average precipitation uh, likely. Not as wet um, for Greece. It looks like things are drying out a little bit in Greece. I mean, going further north through these central, um, these more central eastern parts of Europe, it does still look a little bit drier than average uh, there. You'll notice that in the North Sea, it looks rather above average with precipitation, and I think we are probably focusing on easterly winds, bringing snow showers into eastern parts of the country, while uh, western Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland, is drier uh, there. So uh, this looks like a classic Scandinavian high type situation, really bringing uh, cold air from uh, sort of uh, the Arctic and Siberia moving into many parts of Europe on those easterly winds. Then we move through to week three, which takes us from the uh, 4th through to the 10th of February. Broadly, the pattern is continuing, really. The north and the west of Europe still looking colder than average. So Scandinavia, again, widely it's colder than average. UK, Ireland, uh, France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, still colder than average there. And down into Spain and Portugal, a little bit colder than average uh, for you. Then these centres, these more centres are uh, close to average, extending up towards the west of Russia. And then in the far southeast of Europe, it's milder again. So once more, we see milder than average average above average temperature anomalies mainly restricted to um, the southeast of Europe from the Black Sea uh, going down into uh, Greece and Turkey. Precipitation wise in uh, week three which is before to the 10th of February we're looking at drier than average conditions again to the north so again indicative of a blocking signal of high pressure likely to be sitting up here. Southern parts of Europe looking more unsettled so through the men it looks like pretty unsettled uh, free bear. And these central parts of Europe average to close to average with um, precipitation. So a little bit uh, on the sort of normal to drier than average side through those central parts of Europe. I think we've probably got a subtly tracking jet stream going down here, taking precipitation through the med from the Atlantic into the Mediterranean with our high pressure sitting up here, bringing in these cold northeasterly winds to many parts of northern and western Europe uh, as we go in into uh, week three. Not sure what's gone wrong there. Let's try and get rid of that and then get rid of that and we'll get rid of that too and we'll try and move on 
to week four. So this is how week four is. Week seven for 2019, but week four for our forecast period is looking. And uh, we find that it's still cold across many central and northern parts of uh, Europe. If anything, that cold has possibly been receded just a little bit uh, further eastward. So you'll notice the UK and Ireland here, we are still a little bit colder than average, but less so than we are in weeks uh, one, two, and three. And Ireland's actually coming out close to average. So it looks like you begin to turn a little bit less cold in the extreme west of Europe. So UK, Ireland, France, Spain, Portugal, possibly just a little bit more of an Atlantic influence beginning to uh, move through there into the middle of February. That's something that the CFSV2 has also been picking up on for the middle of February slightly less cold and that forces the colder conditions actually back into kind of like western Russia and uh, it's still there across Scandinavia around the Baltic states into northeastern parts of Europe as well and these central areas are still pretty cold also so uh, again we've got to Germany we've got the low countries coming out a bit cold and average go down into uh, the Mediterranean close to average really for much of the men and you'll notice those mild and average temperature anomalies are fading away they're fading quite a bit in the southeast of Europe. So uh, some sort of pattern change looks like it's beginning to take place there through the middle of February. Starting to turn a little bit less cold in the extreme north and west of Europe, and it's beginning to turn a little bit less mild in the far south and southeast of Europe. Signs of a change, perhaps, for uh, the middle and second half of February. Precipitation-wise, it looks drier than average across uh, northern parts of the uh, uh, northern parts of Europe still, so quite dry, close to Scandinavia. Um, and also still a bit of a blocking signal really extending to the north of the UK around Iceland and probably moving up towards Greenland. Looks quite unsettled in that far southeastern corner. Otherwise, it's a very weak signal as it usually is for precipitation in week four. We've just got this large area of uh, close to average or no particular signal with the precipitation uh, once we get through to uh, week four or of course week seven for our forecast period. So it is a cold scene really across many parts of Europe in the week ahead. It looks like it'll be cold uh, for the UK and for Ireland in the next two or three weeks and most parts of uh, Northern, Central and West Europe coming out cold as well. The warm, the mild temperatures are going to be in the south and southeast of Europe but it will be quite unsettled there with a risk of heavy showers and thunderstorms. Generally looks quite unsettled through the middle, I have to say, as we begin to pick up something of a southerly tracking jet stream. Right, so that's your ECMDF 30-day uh, look ahead done and dusted. We'll be back later on this afternoon on the homepage with a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So come back for that then. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.